and hello again open formers and youtubers hope you are doing well today so in the last video we were talking about some uh, we were just introduced to some time varying boundary conditions yeah so uh, you're going to uh, you want to uh, yeah look at uh, time varying boundary conditions and put that into a new case so here I have my usual github uh, repository and in the last time we made a Laplacian uh, snappy foam. So we use snappy hex mesh to get so, sort of get a very long pipe. And then the the heat wave will kind of travel from one end to the other. Now let's uh, let's do a, some sort of natural convection with uh, time varying boundary conditions. So make directory. I'll make a directory called a pimple uh, buoyant pim pimple foam. Uh, time varying BC okay so uh, that's what I have I'm gonna make that and this is what I'm gonna put on github so first thing first uh, how do we how do we begin we kind of want to copy some kind of a base case in so we want to take a look at the heat transfer and we go to buoyant simple form buoyant simple foam and then we want to take the buoyant cavity and then we just copy this file and we start working from here so this is cleaned up uh, oops clear I mean clear okay so we gotta copy this over here so I'm gonna copy this directory and put it here buoyant pimple foam uh, cpar whatever and put it here so I have one buoyant cavity over here so that's one base file all right um, so I want to uh, copy this and I want to name this uh, I want to copy into a new file called uh, uh, time varying uh, cavity foam okay so I have a base file in case I mess things up and then now I have this file which I have a um, time varying cavity foam meaning to say okay this is the final file I kind of want so what else do we need we kind of want to take a look at the pimple foam as well so I'll clear this up see the buoyant pimple foam and let's copy the thermal couple test case into this uh, folder. So thermal couple test case. Why are we doing this? Well, we want to take a look at uh, how um, how to change from the buoyant simple form to buoyant pimple form. There may be other parameters we need to compare, and we need to take a look at the solver here. So CPAR, all of this, and dot. So these are reference files that we want. And of course, one more thing is how do we want to implement uh, time varying boundary conditions? So, again, um, there are two ways of uh, implementing time uh, varying boundary conditions. One is called the uniform fixed value. All right, and then the other, if I suppose, if we want to use it for heat flux of time varying heat flux, we can we can talk about the uniform fixed gradient. Uh, uniform fixed gradient. So remember, we have uh, for heat transfer in the walls, with adiabatic is for zero. We have zero gradient fixed temperature. We use the fixed value. For fixed heat flux, we use fixed gradient. But uh, since we are on time varying, the time varying uh, temperature we will use uniform fixed value. And for uh, possibly our um, time varying heat flux condition we will use uniform fixed gradient okay so hopefully everyone is clear on that if not just uh, leave a comment in the sec in the comment section below we'll discuss a little bit more all right so this is what uh, I think the, the fixed gradient patch looks like I don't think this, this is not relevant okay um, not relevant okay so this one is very important how do we uh, how do we find the 
uh, implement our uniform fixed value. So this is a time varying temperature profile that we kind of want to first try out. So where, where can we find all of this uniform fixed value? And the answer is, okay, we take a look at this foam tutorial uh, called chopped nozzle in the combustion reacting foam. So let's go to combustion and reacting foam. Okay, I will, I will do this. Uh, CD. Okay, I copied the whole tutorial folder here. Clear, and let's go to combustion, as was suggested, and reacting foam, and we have a choke nozzle. Okay, never mind. Let's just do this first. Oh, we have to go to RAS, and we see the choke nozzle. And this is where I have already done the all run. I've done an all run script just to see what it's like. Okay, so we have done the all run and all the data is uh, being presented here. Okay, and we can copy this case. We can copy this case into our directory so that we have reference files conveniently around for us. So this file is important to see how we can implement time varying boundary conditions. Okay. So we're gonna take a while to copy because there is so much, so much, so much data. Um, and we'll probably wanna clean that up uh, after some time. Um, okay, so we wanna clean that up after some time. Uh, meaning to say, I wanna get rid of all these extra data. Okay, so CD chalk nozzle, and I'll run the all clean. And that should be able to remove all the unnecessary uh, data and clear and first thing first i want to do is to commit changes to git git app dot git commit with message uh uh buoyant pimple foam time varying bc first commit added okay so that's the commit message all right and uh, i'll push it And I'll enter my username and password. So it's going to upload everything up to GitHub. It should be very quick. And for now, uh, let's take a look at um, the choke nozzle because that is most interesting for us to see what this uh, uh, time varying boundary condition looks like. So let's go to choke nozzle and let's go to the temperature. All right, so what is choke nozzle? There is basically a combustion of methane uh, and some uh, in and hydrogen or something like that in uh, water uh, to produce uh, um, the combustion products. Okay, so these I believe are some either concentrations or, or yeah, concentration or mole fraction of a uh, yeah, concentration or more fraction of the species being uh, over here. So open foam doesn't just do heat transfer and fluid mechanics. It can also do uh, finite volume analysis for combustion. You know, that's a chemical reaction there. So if I really look at Y default, I think this is something to do with uh, some more fraction. But uh, I could be wrong. But uh, again, there are a number of things going on here. So the chemical species, I think this is the mole fraction, if I'm not wrong. And this has to do with turbulence. The alpha T, uh, which is the turbulent uh, thermal diffusivity. And all of these uh, pertain to the K epsilon model. Pressure is pressure. Uh, it's pretty standard for any kind of flow, fluid flow. It's a U velocity and T. So the interesting one we want to look at is T. So this is where our uniform fixed value boundary condition uh, is. And we can take a look and study how this uh, boundary condition is being put in. So on the patch called inlet air, so there's uh, some sort of inlet. And then we have a type. So we have to type the word type and then put uniform fixed value. Then, then we have to put in this entry called uniform value. Uh, uniform value and then what? What is the uniform value? The uniform value is defined by all these files in this bracket. 
So the first thing we need to type is okay. This we need to tell OpenFoam this is a CSV file. <coughs> All right, CSV is a comma separated values. Next thing we need to tell OpenFoam is uh, which which uh, line is the header. Probably means that you have uh, lots of data in that in that CSV file, and it's quite possible that the first line is usually used as headers. So we will see what that CSV file looks like in a bit and we it's easier to explain from there then we have a reference column okay so probably the first column is the leftmost one you got to tell open from where to start okay uh, again it'll be easier to see with the csv file and then you see this thing called component columns then you see the separator which is a comma because it's a comma separated value file uh, merge separators, we just leave it as no, don't need to really understand. And one of the most important things is where do you put your CSV file? So the CSV file, uh, you are, you're putting it in the constant directory. So that means there needs to be this constant thing here, and then you need to name your CSV file. In this case, it's called alert.csv. And then you have um, uh, inverted commas and then a semicolon as with all C++ or C files. So let's take a look at where the CSV file is so that we can understand how to put these inputs in. All right, I'm going to clear. And there is your inlet CSV file. You'll use the VI editor. All right, so remember, um, on first sight, it can look, again, it looks a bit scary, but don't worry. The first row, of course, is the header. So the header is on the first row, or sometimes uh, they start from row zero. Okay, so so we look uh, vi zero, and you see that the I think we have one line of headers, and header line is one. That means we have one line of headers. So we probably ignore ignore the first line. Okay, let me quit. And oopsie, see choke nozzle, and let's go to constant and vi the inlet csv all right so you'll probably ignore the first line so the first column as you see here so it's zero comma something right so the first column is to do with time so time is over here so 0, 0.0 and then 0 0.001 this will be the time that is being put in all right so it goes from zero and it increases by 0 0.001 seconds all the way up so it's a very long file and it goes all the way up to 0 0.967 seconds okay so this is what the csv file is like now the second column is denoted is separated by commas is mass flow in kg per second so the mass flow is over here 0 0.632 0 0.631 All right, sorry. The mass flow is zero, and then zero, 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 all the way down. So this is the mass flow in kg per second. So it is zero. Now the third one is in is a temperature in kelvins. So it's six three two, and six three one point something, six three zero, six two nine, blah 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 blah, and it'll be a time varying input. Okay. So. Um, so we know that the first column, or in this case, it can be column zero. It will be a time is where the time data is being housed. So I think that is what the reference column is. They want to look for a column telling you what, what time is, what's the time uh, relevant time. And then they, they want a column uh, uh, which says, OK, what temperature is it? And you can see it's the, if time is column zero, uh, mass flow is column one, and temperature is column two. So, if we take a look at the, we take a look at this. Uh, this it should make more sense. The reference column is zero, which tells you which I suppose which time, where which column ho houses the time data, and the component columns will tell you okay. Uh, if the time data is found in zero, which column is uh, the temperature? So this is column two, where you have your temperature data. So you put the two in these brackets here. So the rest of the thing is pretty straightforward. Now to give you the other example, 
um, of how to do it, uh, we need to take a look at the U velocity. Now, the U velocity also uses a very similar, <coughs> similar um, uh, format. So it has some sort of default value here. All right. All right. So it's, it's saying, oh, type uh, flow rate in inlet velocity. Then the value is this over here. All right. This is the value. However, it has a mass flow rate input. And again, this mass flow rate comes from the CSV file. So again, you have to type in your inputs for CSV file and header line, which is one. And then the reference column, again, is where you find your time, I think. Um, and that will be zero, column zero. And the component columns where you find your mass flow rate data will be the first column. So remember, just now we talked about the first column being mass flow rate. So constant vi inlet.csv and indeed the mass flow rate is in the first column. So this is this is what we are talking about here, see? It's all zero all the way. So the temperature is in the second column and this is in the first column. So from this we, we kind of know that all right uh, if we if we put the CSV file in the constant file, we can put CSV files in the constant directory and we can tell open from hey I want this uh, temperature profile input from this uh, CSV file. And you just put the CSV file in the constant directory and then we type in the code to tell open from hey um, I want to change the temperature according to this CSV file. And this is all you have to type in. There's nothing too complicated. We can make our own CSV file and we can demonstrate to that it works. Okay, so yeah. And we can also take a look at uh, whether we need to uh, match it exactly with our control dict, right? So we saw that data came in uh, snippets of 0 0.001 second, right? Do we need to make our control dict exactly 0 0.01 seconds? No, uh, you can see that this delta t is 1 times 10 to the minus 5. So this is actually not the same, and in fact, it is smaller than the 0 0 0.001. So what OpenFoom will do is it will probably just do some linear interpolation of the temperature changes, and it will follow soup, uh, if I'm not wrong. So that will probably be how it works. Okay, so now we have learned how these tutorial files actually um, put in this uh, time varying boundary conditions. And in the next video, we can start to construct our file, hopefully to put a time varying uh, um, temperature boundary condition and then see uh, what the response is on the system. Okay, so it will be in the time domain not frequency domain. I mean, you can use this to do like some frequency response testing or, or uh, simulation in open form. Uh, but yeah, uh, first thing first is to try and set the, set the experiment up and see what happens and how it affects flow rate. Okay, so thanks for watching. I've been yapping, up, yapping for long enough. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.